life before us. A Canadian docu-fiction on the lives of the Dunbar family during the Second World War, written by Rupert Payne and Johnny Canister, narration Rob Stevens. The news spread quickly and all were heartbroken to hear of the death of Cadet Dunbar in a pilot training accident at the Bowmanville Airport. Cadet Dunbar had been particularly eager to serve his country in the war effort, and his legacy would be the source of pride for the Dunbar family for generations. Agent X was immediately brought in to investigate what appeared to be a very suspicious death of Cadet Dunbar. Cadet Dunbar's younger sister Myrtle would take the news particularly hard and would never mention the incident again to avoid the pain from losing her brother that she loved so dearly in such a horrific manner. Colonel D. Dunbar was out on the town with his horse Whiskey when the tragedy occurred. The colonel was a dam buster during the First World War, and he was an inspiration for Cadet Dunbar wanted to join the service. Swig Scott, Myrtle Dunbar, Vivian Lee, Cors Molson, and Plain Jane would gather one week to the day after the plane crash to spread the ashes of Cadet Dunbar on Fraser Lake. There were many tears shed, but everybody spoke of the good times, too, with personal memories of their fallen war hero. Life Before Us, a Canadian docu-fiction on the lives of the Dunbar family during the Second World War, written by Rupert Payne and Johnny Canister, narrated by Rob Stevens. Episode 2. Now, the prime suspect in the murder of Cadet Dunbar was the Romanian. This simple Ed, low-level thug, had spent time in Alcatraz before escaping to Canada. The word on the street is that the Romanian had drained the gas on Cadet Dunbar's trainer in retaliation for unpaid prostitute and gambling debts. Now, the Cadet Dunbar was no choir boy and liked to party hard. He was known to take big losses betting on the pony races. Our war hero was also very sweet on one painted lady called Slutsy O'Connor, who was part of the Romanian stable of coal girls. Cadet Bamba always paid his debts, so his demise was not likely over money, but over the affections of a girl. The Bamba family lived at 10 Coxwell Avenue in Toronto. James Dunbar was the head of the household. Mr. Dunbar supported his family as a milkman for the Bell's Dairy Company, and it was James who serviced the Beaches area community with his familiar big red milk truck. The highlight of the Dunbar family of the week were Sunday dinners. Friends and relatives would often attend and post for pictures and partake in the friendly game of Crocono, a board game which needed some skill for taking out the opponents with a flick of a middle finger against a wooden buck. The family dog poker would entertain the little children for hours. Poker would do this amazing dog tricks for scraps from the lavish dinners prepared by Aunt Mabel and Mother Hazel. That concludes episode two of Life Before Us. Life Before Us, episode three. Robbie O'Connor Dunbar was born at the Scarborough General Hospital, arriving into this world nine months and one day after the plane tragedy that killed his daddy, Cadet Dunbar. The mother would try to keep the identity of the father a secret, but many would gossip and the truth would eventually come to light. Plain Jane was the queen of gossip, and there were no Dunbar family secrets that she did not know or would eventually find out about. Plain Jane was a Scarborough general for her candy striping duties when by chance she sees a young Robbie in the maternity ward. She knew instantly who had fathered Miss O'Connor's bouncing baby bad boy. She asked her confident, Can you keep a secret? And surely says, My lips sealed. Robbie O'Connor Dunbar, or Rod for short, would grow up to become a devilishly handsome young man who loved to fish. Rod was known for playing practical jokes on everybody he would ever meet. I caught a darn big catfish down Cottage Creek, big as a man it was, huge. Nearly charred my arm off it did, hooked it on moonshine and bully beef. Robbie O'Connor Dunbar was the spitting image of his great-grandfather, Colonel B. Dunbar. 
I'm a working on getting a new coat for Madame Beard. It's getting that long. Should stay me for the winter. It's damn near bulletproof. It's that wiry. Rod's best practical joke was when he convinced the Prime Minister of Canada that he was the head of the Canadian Navy and that the Canadian naval forces could get their new ships for the war effort to their European destinations faster by sailing over Niagara Falls. The Prime Minister took the advice, resulting in extending the length of the Second Great War. Agent X was extremely pissed. Several assassination attempts were made on the life of Robbie O'Connor Dunbar. Episode 3 of The Life Before Us Written by Rupert Payne and Johnny Connexter Narrated by Rob Stevens